In this lesson, we're working on solving compound inequalities. Uh, previously, we've done some work with graphing them. Here, we're actually going to come up with what the solution set is, and then we'll graph them. Um, when you're solving compound inequalities, often you will be given the information in the form that we're looking at here in this question up on top of the screen, where we actually have one big long inequality where we have you know one statement, and then a greater than less than symbol, and another statement, and then another greater than less than symbol, and finally a third statement. And that's that's not at all uncommon when you're talking about looking at a compound inequality that needs to be solved. Um, we're going to use this information from a question sent in by a young lady named Chandra, who says she thinks she's doing something wrong because her answer doesn't make any sense, and she wants to know what she's missing. And this is the compound inequality she was given. 2x minus 4 is greater than x, which is greater than 3x minus 7. Now, Shanta, the first thing to do when you have a long inequality like this is to split it into two parts. So what we're going to do is solve both 2x minus 4 is greater than x, and we're going to solve x is greater than 3x minus 7. Now, the key to recognize here when you split something like this apart so it can be solved is that both of these bits of information have to be true so we can graph what x actually is x is what's in the middle. x is, is both this part over here, 2x minus 4 is greater than x, and it's x is greater than 3x minus 7. So what we're looking for is all the values of x that satisfy both of these inequalities. So let's take a look at what happens when we work on solving these. And as usual, we just want to get the variable on one side by itself and all the constants on the other side. So we'll subtract x from both sides here. This will go away, and we'll have just x minus 4 on this side, and 0 left over here. Then we'll add 4 to both sides, and we'll end up with x is greater than 4. So for this inequality, or this part of the inequality, we're looking for any number bigger than 4. So if we go ahead and just sort of sketch that in real quick, we're looking at all of these numbers over here. So then what we want to do is find out what portion of those numbers is included in the other inequality. So let's solve the other inequality, and I'll change colors real quick. Um, here we have 1x on this side and 3x is on this side, so let's collect the x's on the right. So we'll subtract x from both sides. We'll get 0 is greater than 2x minus 7. Add 7 to both sides. We'll have 7 is greater than 2x. And then divide both sides by 2, and we'll get 3 and a half is greater than x. Now, if 3 and a half is greater than x, then that means x is less than 3 and a half, right? So we can actually write that in the other order just so it's easier to visualize. x is less than 3 and a half. So this inequality is talking about numbers that start at 3 and a half, right here, although 3 and a half is not included, and then it's shaded to the left. So our orange side, this part of our inequality, starts at 3 and a half and goes this way, and our green side starts at 4 and goes this way. So what numbers are included in both of those? There aren't any. The only numbers, that, in fact, there aren't any numbers between 3.5 and, and 4 at all, so there's this sort of gap between the two. Anything bigger than 3.5 and, and anything less than 4 is in neither one of them, let alone being in both. And since what we need to do is find all the values of x that are in both equations at the same time, the reason you probably came up with an answer that didn't make any sense was you came up with x is an empty set. And if that's what you had, then you're exactly right, because there aren't any values that are in both inequalities at once. So just remember as you're solving these that that's what you're looking for, is what values both inequalities have where they sort of intersect. That's what you're looking for for your values of x. And I would guess you probably did that one right, Chandra, so congratulations. There was a reason it didn't make any sense. <laughs>